Before I begin, I just want to say that what we're trying to learn are generalities. We're going to learn the rules and not the exceptions. As you go through uh, the video, uh, there will absolutely be different times when you're going to say, hey, what about this disease? How about that disease? Sure. Uh, there are always exceptions and you know, uh, th th that's what you learn during your uh, residency and beyond. But where you guys are starting out, you want to learn the general rules. And then you can build on and learn the exceptions. All right, guys, welcome back. So we are now on to the central nervous system. So the first segment of the central nervous system going distal to proximal would now be the spinal cord. So some basic facts that we all need to know. Where does the spinal cord begin? Yep, right at the foramen magnum and goes down. Where does the spinal cord end? At what vertebral level? Around L1, L2 which means do you have a spinal cord uh, in your lower back, in the mid-lower lumbar region? And the answer is no, you do not have a spinal cord in the lower back. Okay, so now what is a spinal cord pathology called? And hopefully you guys have read and uh, done a little bit of um, um, homework prior to starting the video um, because now this gets a little tough if you haven't read. Uh, so what is it? What is it? It is called a myelopathy. Do not, do not confuse this with myopathy. It's myelopathy, M-Y-E-L-O, myelo, myelopathy. So now, what are the hallmark signs and symptoms of a myelopathy? This is actually very hard for the beginning student um, because you guys start thinking about the different syndromes and different... Uh, uh, lesions and hemi cut and full cut of the spinal cord. Um, for simplistic sake, let's assume it's a full transection of the spinal cord. What kind of problems would you have? So for starters, you have sensory loss below that lesion, and you have weakness below that lesion, lesion where you have the full transection. So you have sensory loss below it and weakness below it. This concept of sensory and weakness loss below a certain lesion level is called a sensory or motor level. Very important concept. And these patients will have numbness or tingling or whatever sensation they have up to a certain point in their body, whether it be their belly button, T10, whether it be their nipple line, T4, xiphoid, T6, you know, whatever the level is, numbness and tingling below that weakness below that, and completely normal above it. But that's not all. There is more. So what is that more? What else do you have that's classic for spinal cord? Very important. Well, that's something else is bowel and bladder symptoms. Bowel and bladder referring to one of four things. I keep this simple, guys. You know, I'm, I'm truly of the KISS method, keep it simple, stupid method. You know, if it's urinary problems, it can be one of two things. You pee too much or don't pee enough. Bowels defecate too much or don't defecate enough. Really simple. So the four different things that can happen with bowel and bladder issues is urinary retention, urinary incontinence, bowel retention, which is constipation, or defecation excess, which would be fecal incontinence. So you might say, wait, if you have a complete transection, who cares about diagnosing with bowel and bladder because it's pretty obvious they have this horrible sensory level and they can't move their legs, and so it must be clearly a spinal cord lesion. Well, I hate to break it to you guys, but not every patient comes in with a complete transection of the spinal cord. So how do they usually present? So most patients present with, usually it's, you know, can be unilateral, but usually it's bilateral, uh, numbness, tingling in their legs, and some weakness. So you may think, well, this is a neuropathy. You know, they've got numbness and tingling in both legs and slowly working its way up. But then you ask my bowel and bladder. Then you ask, do you have any bowel and bladder changes? And most patients are embarrassed to tell you about their bowel and bladder um, issues, but you have to ask them. And be upfront, ask them about any change, any recent onset or new onset of fecal incontinence, 
excess constipation, uh, urinary retention, urinary incontinence. Now, don't forget, constipation is an extremely common symptom in a vast majority of the population. So just having constipation is not a spinal cord lesion. A change or worsening constipation makes you think it could be a spinal cord lesion. One thing I do want you guys to do before we conclude this video um, is to uh, uh, read up on the different spinal cord tracts, uh, which would be dorsal columns, spinal thalamic, corticospinal, um, and the concept of lamination. If you've never heard of this concept, look it up as it relates to the spinal cord. I'm not talking about lamina, the different laminar layers in the spinal cord. I'm talking about lamination within a given tract. On one of the future videos, I will discuss these different tracts. But for this video, for the hallmark signs and symptoms of the neuroaxis video, I'm not going to go any further on that. So we are now done with uh, spinal cord. Next up is brainstem. Okay, guys. So same routine. Um, figure out what the hallmark signs and symptoms are of a brainstem lesion. And with the brainstem, it can be extremely difficult. So what I want you to do is uh, pick two syndromes randomly. Let's say lateral medullary and lateral pontine. It doesn't matter which two syndromes. Pick two syndromes, compare the two, and see how they're different and how they're the same and how they're unique. Okay? Trust me, if you just do this little bit of legwork, a little bit of homework, and really, really try to understand this, you know, we're going to jump the shark very shortly, and brainstem lesions will become very, very easy. Okay? So, see you on the next video, guys.